Let's find out. And joining me right now is Transport Minister Omar al -Gabra. Welcome, Minister. I appreciate you making the time for us today. I want to ask you about this bill. It's aimed at strengthening the port system and railway safety here in Canada. You say it'll also help strengthen Canada's supply chains and will help with inflation. What concretely will this do to tackle inflation? Uh, Mike, it's great to be with you on your show. Uh, look, um, Canadians um, and citizens around the world are experiencing higher prices today. And we know that the root cause of these higher prices are mostly economic and supply chain disruptions. We are still coming out of the COVID public health measures, and there is an ongoing imbalance and inefficiencies in the, in, in the economy a global economy and domestic economy. So this bill aims to increase and uh, encourage more efficiency, uh, more new tools, uh, more digitization, more information sharing that will enhance efficiency and therefore reduce the pressure uh, that is causing rising prices and also, by the way, causing lack of availability. So the increased efficiency that we're going to implement in the system is going to help address some of the root causes of supply chains that we're seeing today in our economy. Now, I know you have been warning Canadians when you introduced this that it's not going to make a difference overnight. So how long will it realistically take for us to see results to those improvement to those uh, supply chains? Mike, it's really important that, that your viewers know that the government is doing immediate action as we speak. There are a lot of um, steps that are being taken to improve efficiency as we speak. Those efficiencies are done on an operational basis. They are done on a day-to-day -day -day basis. This bill aims to address some of the systemic and structural inefficiencies or opportunities to enhance efficiencies that exist within the system. To, uh, to answer your question, Look, we need to pass it first in the House of Commons. So I'm looking forward to working with my colleagues from other parties on passing this bill. Um, I'm hoping to pass it as soon as possible. And once we pass it, we're going to start working on implementing the regulations that this bill uh, implements. And we are going to see structural improvements in the system that will lead to better efficiencies, lower prices for Canadians and Canadian businesses. There was already this supply chain task force that released a final report, though, last month where recommendations to improve Canada's supply chains. And it calls for things like establishing a supply chain office, immediately addressing the transportation supply chain labor shortage, and develop long-term supply chain strategy. So does the government accept all the recommendations from that report? Uh, yes, Mike. Uh, I want to thank members of the task force for the work that they've done. They've uh, put together a comprehensive report that included very good recommendations and we are working on implementing those recommendations. Um, um, this, uh, by the way, part of the recommendation is addressing congestion at ports and this bill helps do that. So uh, it, there's really an ongoing work that is taking place today to implement uh, these recommendations and I look forward, as I said, to working with my colleagues on passing this bill. Just to shift gears for a second, though, as uh, Minister of Transport, this is your responsibility and your, pur and your purview as well. Uh, you had been asked earlier about masks on planes and trains, and you had said that you actually wear a mask when you travel on a plane. But with public health officials recommending people wear masks indoors again, what is the threshold that we have to cross for your government to bring back a mask mandate on planes and trains in this country? Uh First of all, Mike, uh, these measures that were implemented in the past were extraordinary. Um, I never took joy in implementing these measures, but I felt they were necessary. Our government felt they were necessary to protect the health and safety of Canadians. And I hope we never have to go back to those days. Having said all of that, I, you know, we make no apologies for doing what we believe is the right thing. For now, the advice is to strongly recommend individuals to wear masks because we think we're in a phase where pe we need to depend on people's individual responsibility. So we continue to encourage people to take personal responsibility, to wear masks uh, and, uh, and follow the advice that we get from our doctors. So let me repeat, I hope we never find ourselves get there, but if the doctor's advice, God forbid, changes, then we're gonna have to see what we can do. But for now, I really hope we never have to go back there. Last, I just want to ask you, Canadians are preparing to travel again for that busy holiday season. Unions representing the air traffic controllers and airline pilots are warning of staff shortages 
that will have serious impacts. So what is your government doing to ensure that the months ahead, uh, the months ahead will not be like this past summer where we had massive delays at airports? Mike, uh, I, you know, I still remember uh, those summer months. Um, those delays, cancellations were really unacceptable. And uh, we worked very hard with airports and airlines to address them. I'm pleased to say that currently operations at airports and airlines are back to pre-pandemic uh, uh, performance level. Having said that, there are many lessons that we learned from this last summer. And uh, I am hosting a summit next Thursday uh, to discuss uh, these lessons with airlines, airports, and other stakeholders, uh, and to ensure that everyone is prepared for the Christmas rush. We cannot go back to what we saw last summer, and we're making sure that we do everything we can to, uh, to be prepared for that busy Christmas season. So what does that mean, be prepared for? Does that mean staffing levels, making sure that the airlines will guarantee that things will go well? Well, yes, we're making sure that the airlines and airports have the staffing level they need. We're making sure that the systemic issues that need to be addressed, including at CATSA and NAV Canada and airports are, are prepared. All of the above, we need to make sure that we have the proper forecasts for what we expect the volumes to be. Um, all uh, information sharing across uh, various organizations within the sector, all of that needs to happen. And again, the summit next Thursday will help us put together um, in, in new tools and new ideas to make sure that we do these systemic issues properly and make sure that we never go back to those days again. And we hope that we don't go back to those days and we hope that you will come back after that summit. Transportation Minister Omar Gabra, thanks so much for taking the time today. Thanks, Mike.